we get this video started out, I just wanted to give a quick update to my channel. As some of you may already know, I'm assuming most of you don't, my best friend passed away on September 5th from uh, blood clots, which caused heart failure. He was only 35 years old. He was an integral part of this channel when I first started. He first off motivated me to start a channel, and then when I was 10 videos in, I was ready to give up and he talked me out of it. So I want to dedicate this video to my best friend, Jordan Bryce Knox. Rest in peace. That's partly been the reason why I haven't been regularly uploading content, which will change and I will start uploading weekly or at least do my best to do weekly. So just wanted to get that out of the way. So I haven't done any shotgun videos before, except for just firing this old Steven Savage 12 gauge two and three quarters. It is a Model 94 Series P, and there's actually some pretty important history to this gun for me. This was the first gun I ever owned. I was gifted it by a friend, and after taking it shooting, and just getting into the whole culture of firearms, I basically became addicted to it, and that's what started my passion and ultimately helped me start my YouTube channel. So I'm really excited to do a video on this pump action 12 gauge I got here. My friend bought it used, and he lent it to me for a few months so I could use it in a video, and also I could clean it and do some maintenance to it for him. It's pretty in bad shape cosmetically for the most part. There's some serious oxidation and rust on the outside of the barrel and on the inside as well. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart. It is a Hawk model 982 12 gauge. This is the Chinese version basically knockoff of Remington 870. It's basically a Remington 870 clone. And it's also been called the Narinko Model 982. So, and I've only fired a pump action shotgun once, which was in one of my videos before. So I'm really excited to get this thing cleaned up and take it shooting today. Okay, so first and foremost, let's do a safety check on this guy. And it is clear. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start things off by taking off the barrel lug right here. And now before you do this, you want to make sure the action is forward like it is now. And then you're just going to take it and... Turn it counterclockwise, just like you would a screw, and then it comes off just like that. And then, you're going to want to get inside here. You notice there's a notch there, and then there's also a notch on that side. Now you're going to want to push the notch that's on the left, and then that slides the barrel out and there you go whoops so okay so we got the barrel separated from the fore end which is where you pump it and then we've got the two bolt pieces that were sitting right in there right in these two little notches there. So you can see those. If 
this thing has been cleaned regularly for you, there's probably no need to take apart the trigger mechanism, which is in here, but since this is used and it looks like the previous owner did not take very good care of it, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And to do that, there are these two pins there and there, and you're just going to want to punch those out, pull them out this other side, and then the trigger housing will slide right out. Okay, so now ideally, you would probably want a punch a little bit bigger than this. This is the punch that I use to remove the bolt carrier group and the firing pin for my AK-47, but it looks like it fits nicely into that notch there. And from what I've researched, it shouldn't take much to get these pins out. So I'm just gonna gently tap those out as not to bend this punch. So let's go ahead. Oh yeah, see they came out really easy. So there's one out. Let's get the other. Yeah, see that was super easy. And we got those two pins right there. So now this trigger housing should come right out. I think you're supposed to, yeah, you push in there, reload the shells, and then it pops right out. It doesn't appear to me to be that dirty, but we'll go ahead and clean it up anyways. It seems to me that this r shotgun is more cosmetically dirty than anything. So I did a quick check on the barrel. It seemed fairly clean inside. I didn't see any big particles or residue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the biggest piece, which is the stock, the chamber, and the magazine where the shells are held. So I like to use socks as rags because you can reuse them, turn them inside out, and then you got a clean side there. And I used a new one today so that way we can see how dirty this thing is overall. So let's go ahead and just give this a little hops gun cleaner here and go ahead and hit it with the brush a little bit. This isn't the most crucial spot. I can already see I just removed a big piece of rust there. Okay, now I got a better picture. You can see there's really nothing very crucial in here, so I'll just kind of quickly loosen up any residue that might have been caked on in there with this plastic brush. Came in my gun cleaning kit. And that's probably good right there, honestly. And then we'll go ahead and wipe it clean. Get all that gunk out of there. See, so far it's pretty dirty. I mean, when you get a used gun, who knows? You never know if the previous owner ever cleaned it once. It seems like a lot of people just don't want to take the time or learn how to do stuff like this. So some people will pay a gunsmith to do it for them. But the first thing I do when I get any firearm is research how to take it apart, clean it, and put it back together. Okay, so it looks like all that's really left on this piece would be just cosmetic, like right in here. And then we can also run a board brush through there. Okay, so I've got some lubrication on this rag here. Not a large amount, just a small amount. It's just a little damp and we're gonna go ahead and press that in and go all the way down in and just kind of spin around and get some of that. Oh wow. Yeah, you see how the rag turned a rusted oxidized color after doing that. So yeah, this was definitely not well maintained, that's for sure. I think I'll even hit it with a little bit more oil, just to be safe. Okay. Alright, that's probably good. Okay, so now it's just going to be cleaning up cosmetically just all the steel parts. It looks like... Even the ghost ring side on there is a little oxidized. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's set this aside. 
And I'm just gonna apply a generous amount of lubrication on both sides. And right there too. And then we'll just go ahead and kind of get rid of it. Give it a little quick brushing, get rid of all that rust and oxidation. And luckily, it seems like it's all coming off nice and clean. So it wasn't too bad. Definitely wasn't sitting outside in the rain, that's for sure. Okay, so we'll call that good. Go ahead and wipe that clean. Yeah, see, look at that. All rust. Usually when I clean my guns, it's black from the gunpowder residue, never just straight brown rust colored. <laughs> yeah, see, look at that. It's pretty bad. Okay, so that side's good, the top is good there, Let's get, we'll call that good for this section. I will go through and hit that with a Q-tip. I noticed a lot of the videos I found on this specific firearm, they were just disassembly videos, they weren't going over the cleaning process, which is understandable to an extent because it's a pretty basic firearm. So cleaning it shouldn't really be an issue for somebody who already has knowledge of firearms it already looks a hundred times better than it did before i started so okay so we'll just call that good now i'm just gonna spray a little bit of oil here on my rag and we'll just get this really quick and i'll kind of clean those threads out too from the lug and as you can see this is a lot darker than what's coming up here okay let's move on to the barrel itself when you clean rifles you're supposed to pull your bristle brush the way the bullet would travel I'm not sure if that's as important with a shotgun because I don't think it has as much rifling but i'm gonna go ahead and do it that way anyways just because well, better safe than sorry in my opinion so let's give this a quick spray and run this through using this 12 gauge bore brush all right and like i said it wasn't very dirty so i'm just gonna do a quick inspection yeah it looks like the majority of the sediments out of there so i think this will remove the rest of it so let's swap this out okay so now let's go ahead and pull that through oh yeah i guess it was a little bit dirtier than i thought Okay, so the inside of the barrel is nice and clean now. So now, I'm going to focus on this oxidization all on the outside of the barrel, which is just cosmetic, but it's pretty bad. So let's see what we can do about getting rid of that. To be a little more accurate with where this oil is ending up, I'm going to use this CLP dropper and just kind of drop it on all these little specks of rust and then we'll hit it with the brush see if that loosens it up which I'm sure it will for the most part which it looks like it's doing a lot better now and then we'll hit it with the rag, see what we did to it. Yeah, it looks a lot better, but there's still definitely some serious oxidization on there. 
So I'll probably go through later and spend a lot more time on this trying to get it cosmetically looking perfect. Get rid of all those blemishes of rust. So now let's go ahead and focus on this ring where the mag tube rests. I'm just going to hit that with this really quick. Get it there, get it there. And then I'm going to hit the fixed front iron sight really quick. And we'll call it good for that. After I get back from taking this shooting, I will probably spend some more time getting rid of all this oxidization and rust, and then I will upload that video. Let me go ahead and turn the light on to give you a better view of this. Okay, that's better. Now you guys can see the scope of this rust. It almost feels like they're kind of craters a little bit. I can't tell if it's indented or if it's coming out, but I'm definitely going to spend some time trying to get rid of that. I might hit it with a steel wool pad, see if that helps. We'll deal with all the serious cosmetic issues later, which they're not affecting the performance of it at all. And then we're going to just go ahead and kind of lightly clean this section here. Got that with a little lubrication. And I see some more oxidation. It's everywhere. I don't know why people get firearms and then just let them go to waste like that. I should be able to get this thing looking like new. It's just going to take some elbow grease and a better tool than this bristle brush here. So. Okay, I think we're going to call it good for the barrel now. There is some oxidization in here as well, so let's spend a few minutes getting this thing looking a little bit better. Go ahead and hit it with some hops, and just use our brush on there, and then I will run the bristle brush through there as well as the cotton brush. Okay, so I think that's good for that section. Let's go ahead and hit this with a little bit of CLP. It's so small, I don't want to spray it because it'll miss most of it. And then we'll hit that with a brush really quick just to kind of clean it up. And then now it's on to the bore brush in there. Just gonna give this a quick spray, this bristle brush, and I'm gonna set that down at the same time so the overspray gets both of them. And now we're just gonna run this through just like we would the barrel. It's a little bit bigger than the barrel itself, so I'm just kind of getting the edges of the inside of there. We're gonna switch back to this cotton rag. It attaches onto the bore brush or the bore rod. And run that through. Get out anything left over and dry up the majority of the oil. And I think we are good to go now. So now let's move on to the trigger housing. Now, like I said, most of this is plastic, so it's probably not that crucial. And it actually looks fairly clean compared to the rest of the firearm, so I'm not even gonna really add any lubrication. I might put a couple drops on my bristle brush here, and then we'll just kind of clean and lubricate at the same time. I'm just kinda, and then we'll just dry that oil up. And then 
we will move on to the bolt and then we'll be ready to put this thing back together and take it shooting. Okay, so I'm gonna call that good. Let's move on to the bolt. So here is the bolt. We'll just give it a little lubrication. Clean out some of the internal parts. Looks like it's the spring and the firing pin there. And get this cosmetic area here. The end of the firing pin. And I think that's good to go in my opinion. And this is just the little bracket that holds it into place on the barrel. So we'll just hit that with the reg. Oh yeah, there's a, it's pretty dirty. Okay, so we are almost done. Now we just got the lug for the barrel and these two pins. And I'm just going to give this a couple quick drops of some CLP. And I am just going to set these two pins on this sock with that and then just do a little spray to get all three of them. Okay, so just wipe those clean. Pins are not crucial at all. They're just holding the trigger mechanism in place. Okay, so those pins are done. Let me do a quick brush on this locking lug. And those two indents there. And let me get the threads really quick too, because that's pretty important in my opinion. And I think we are good to go. Let me just clean this excess oil off. And then we can put this thing together and take it shooting, which I am very excited for. Just getting these little hard to get to spots with the Q-tip. Because the rag won't really drop down in there. And then I, I'm going to take the Q-tip here and just kind of push it into the thread and spin around to get all that crap out of those threads, which looks like was pretty dirty by looking at that Q-tip. We are ready to put this bad boy back together. We're basically just going to do everything in reverse now. And I'm going to start out with the trigger mechanism. Which it appears goes in just like that. I just want to make sure those pins line up. There we go. You can see through where the pins go. You just got to be very observative here because one of these pins is considerably bigger than the other so let's go ahead put the big one in first and it looks like it doesn't matter which way it goes in both sides are the same so let's get this one secured okay we got that pin in place now yeah see that's fine now, if you have it, I would use a rubber mallet. But I think it just needs to be flush on both ends, which it is now. So that should be good. We're ready to put the mag tube back in. Now, to do that, you're going to want to put the bolt carrier on there, just like that. And then, bolt carrier group on top of there and then you are going to want to slide slide it in like that and then you just gotta get in there and you push both those buttons okay I'm pushing the lever on the right and then the one on the left and there we go now we finally got it wow that's one of the the harder reassembly procedures I think I've ever done. So now it should be a piece of cake from here. 
slide the barrel back into place, obviously. And then we are going to push the mechanism that lets you pull this back, dropping that into place and allowing us to screw that lug nut, which was the very first thing, back into place. Which is locking it down much more securely. So now we're ready to take it shooting. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way and fixed. Okay, now let's go to the range.